day. I wrap Stina Blinder & Associates with your metals market wrap up and this is for Tuesday and we are now on the 16th of June 2020 about 5.50 in the afternoon and as you know I'm doing these later after 5 p.m. intentionally because I want to get the next day's openings into them and as many of the markets as I can. Now I can't get the grains because I don't want to wait till 7 o'clock and end up uh, <laughs> what did I get sleep four hours a night I'm not going to do that but what we have now is a market that today looked at a retail sales number to kick the stock market up rather dramatically. And part of me, which side of the glass is it? Is it a half full or half empty? A 17.7% jump is great, but when a market collapses to almost no retail sales other than the big stores like Targets and Costco, well, you've got to be concerned when you get this number because it's not making back that 25-30% decline in sales. That's a 17.7% shot off the bottom of it. Remember that. The real good news is that there seems to be a breakthrough in the UK, the United Kingdom, where they have found that a very low cost uh, arthritic drug is having a big impact on about a third of the patients that they've given it to. So that means two thirds it's not working for, but that also means a third are getting something they didn't have. So this is another step in the right direction. If you read, you're hearing a lot of people are moving in different parts of the world into their third phase of testing. This is where very large groups get the drug to see what the percentages are. Well, from the looks of it in China, there's plenty of new people you can give it to. All the children in Beijing have been told in that city, school's over right now. They're not going back at this point. There's another outbreak of COVID-19 and they're gonna wait and contain it. Good move, don't get the kids sick. But in the metal markets, you're down in the gold, but what does it really mean? Well, we're gonna to get to this right now. When we come over to the chart action, again, you're in the 1730 level, you're all of $26 away from the highest close we've recently had. The market still has upside bias as it stayed over the 18 day average of closes. When we take a look at the daily charts with the action that we're getting right now, there's a change. And that change has happened with today's action. You now have a pattern of higher lows on the swing line and higher highs. So the market has again tamed itself back over the past 48 hours here. This was how the market looked. We originally had a lower low and a higher high. But with the move up today, that changes it. So now until 1706.20 is taken out, the market has reverted back out of nothing, again back into a bullish posture. And as you can see tonight, you're not doing any damage to that at this point. What else am I looking at? Well, I like to see where the 18 day average is. I call that the line in the sand. And look at it this way. That is the neutral point on a chart. Markets often go there to figure out what to do next. As you break away from it, you're trying to see, can you get traction to move one direction or the other and catch one of those big trends? So far, it hasn't happened. When you're over that number, the bias is up. When you're over that number and you have a trend up, as the swing line is, it is not unusual to expect that the pros, I'll deem the guys more in the know, pros, are buying that number, their stop, I think is going to be that 1706.20. Now it's a pretty far away stop. It is $2,000 a contract plus. So you've got to understand what, what it is as you trade it. But that's what I think they're going to do. When I look at where the market might go, well, if it goes up, 1762.50 is the Bollinger top. If the market breaks through 1706.20 and takes out the uptrend, by doing that, by the way, you could end up with lower highs back to a lower low. I don't see a lot of downside because the lower Bollinger Band is waiting for you along with the 18 day, um, the 100 day average of closes. So I think the downside is more contained than the upside. When I look at the momentum, the slow stochastics, they're still pointing upward. The numbers are unfortunately getting close to 70. So if you were to pop right now, you're going to be at that 70 number and that's overbought. That's not bad. It doesn't mean the market has to stop. But I think any number over 70, other than those um, not so informed, 
I don't think they're buying. A lot of traders build oscillators. I don't care what type they are, but an oscillator into a market of some type to tell them uh, and warn them, is the market overbought or oversold? It can be an algorithm, it could be a trader that's got different techniques, but that's what I expect. So down here at the 12, uh, at the 1728.40 level, you would be less overbought maybe back into the 67 level, but understand if you're buying there, at this point, I don't know that you're expecting a monster pop. Getting from there, of course, to 1760, would be neat. In the gold-silver ratio, silver seems to have peaked out against the gold temporarily and sort of drifting against it. That's the right word. Its chart pattern is not as pretty as gold's. It is caught in what we call a pipe. Now, what a pipe is is this. I'm going to show you how it forms. Here's a market that's got a broad Bollinger Band base away from it. You came from a narrow action, a pipe, broke out, went to the upside, the market then lost the upside and starts going sideways again. That's called a pipe. And from pipes, markets decide what they're going to do next because it's the frustrating part of the market. What do I mean by that? You spin around in a pipe and you typically don't break out one way or the other. You did that for a long period in here. And if you think traders weren't frustrated, wrong. <laughs> they were right through there. Finally, you got an embedded reading and with it, the market broke out of the pipe. Now, there's different things that break it out. There's events and so on. My point is, you're back in it at this point in time. Just realize it. In the copper market, the copper market lost its embedded reading, and that occurs when the slow stochastic locks into a trend. Now, it could be in a bearish trend or a bullish. When you're over 80 and it does it, with both the K and the D lines, the two numbers that make it up going sideways over 80 for several days or more, when it's lost, it is not uncommon for price to lose its upside momentum, number one. Number two, to find an area that it wants to go back to. I say it's the closest key moving average. And on futures, most of the key moving averages, with the exception of stock indices, I believe, are typically the 18 and the 100. Now, I do use a 200. I use a 45-day average. Some traders use a 50. Some don't use an 18. They use a 20, 21. Everything's up to the person that wants to do it. Nobody's written a book that says this is the only way. They'll never prove that. But what I am saying is as this market lost its momentum down here, prices often, the word is often, not always, make a run to the closest moving average and try to rebuild. That seems to be to me what's going on. And in copper, I'm concerned. You know, when I see that Be Beijing has told the kids not to go to school, neighborhoods are getting shut down, what does that do for the copper market? It's not a bullish force. The bullish force today was seeing the retail sales jump, obviously. Auto sales jump, and the market didn't do an awful lot with it. I think it's got the lingering effect of that COVID. In the platinum market, we still are in a downtrend. You have lower highs, lower lows. You have hit a downside target, the lower bands. Why are Bollinger Bands so important? Because 95% of the time, the market's going to trade within them. And markets that lock into trends have a way of riding those bands to higher levels. That's what you're looking for. So right now, if you slip back, I'm still looking for support there. Where do you think the resistance is? I'll look at the 100-day average to the 18. The trend is down. The market's getting a bit of a reprieve in that it got out of an oversold condition. Uh-uh, uh-uh. A 29 reading is still oversold, anything under 30. So I don't think the market's getting aggressive selling right here because it's oversold, but I don't think it has a lot of ups upside just yet. In the uh, palladium market, you're stuck in that pipe. Do you see how narrow it just keeps crushing in on the market? And as it does it, the volatility falls away with the market. I'm the only, not the only one that recognizes these events. And it doesn't have to be from a Bollinger Band. Take it off and you'll see how the market's narrowing in. The cool part is if you use window envelopes or uh, Bollinger Bands. By the way, I saw Kramer today. You know, I'm always watching at the end of the day some show on technical analysis. He used envelopes today. I loved it. And I, I've been an envelope fan for, for 
decades. And he was showing what happens using them with moving averages, and they are. They're part of moving averages, and they're deviations from it to the upside and downside. And I teach that again in my charting course because it's one of the tools that I use in, in identifying trends, objectives in the market, and so on. But as you look at this, there's not nothing really going on here. You made a higher high today than this high. So you're not in a downtrend. You have it now a higher high and a lower low and you're going sideways. I don't see anything to do there. And in the dollar index, the question is, with the lost embedded reading, often when that happens, markets, as you just heard me say, make a run to the closest moving average. In this case, it's the 18. It hasn't gotten close. We'll see if it can do it as a yes or a no. I expect it. I don't expect big legs out of the dollar to the upside. I look at this as a corrective move. I think the overall trend longer term in the dollar is to the downside. Now, I know a lot of you trade the spiders and ETFs, and I've had a lot of people ask me, Ira, why don't you put together a combo package so that people can get a price break by taking both of your spider ETF and the futures video in the morning. Done. If you go to our website under the word combo in the research section, just look at either spider or morning subscriber video. As you do it and you look at the pricing, you'll see the combo package. So I've done what you want. There are not 37 charts anymore that I'm covering. I'm at 34. I counted them before I came on just now. I'm up to 34 and my goal is to get you to 40 charts. I just keep looking at different recommendations. You can leave them, by the way, that you might want covered on Facebook and so on or our YouTube. Let's leave them on YouTube, not Facebook. YouTube, because that's where I post everything and whenever I'm posting uh, the videos, I'm looking to see the commentaries and I'll see if I like them or don't like them. What makes me like them? Do they have a big following? Are they heavily traded? Uh, are they popular? So there's a lot of things that I look at because I'm trying to get across all of you and lead you back into these spider ETF uh, videos or my morning subscriber video. And now that I have both and you get a price break on taking the package, I think it makes a lot of sense for you. So what do I do in these specific buy sell recommendations? Example, in the morning when I record uh, 540, the futures one, what am I doing there? You know what I'm doing. I'm giving you what Asia's done, what Europe's done, the reports that they've already come out with, and what's coming out in the U.S. As you know, I've added to this. I'm up seven more charts with another category. There, I gave them instructions today as to how I want that ad to read. So all you need to do is take a look, go to it, and we offered an introductory price. So you're not signing up at full if you haven't been a subscriber of my spider or the other. Be fair to me, I'll be fair to you on the pricing. If you've never tried anything, what a great way to look at both and see how they work out. Just go to www.irapstein.com, go up to the research area, that's where you'll find it. I'm Irapstein, you have a good day, I'll see you tomorrow.